welcome to my Restoration Shaman 8.3 guide. To start, will shamans be viable in Nyalota? Most of the time, shamans are a must-have in a raid environment. We can provide a lot of healing, especially if the raid is packed, and we do have the Soling Totem, one of the strongest CD, which can sometimes tease boss encounter like Himonar or, most recently, Zaku. In addition, there is a lot of utility that we can bring to the raid, such as Tremor Totem, a wrench kick on the 12 second CD, reincarnation, ancestral protection totem, and more, which can help to make easier few encounter tools such as Jaina. In this video, I also talk to you about the Battle Restoration Shaman, a really versatile build that allows you to be a support DPS. You'll be able to deal decent damages while still having access to your healing CDs and still be able to heal your raid while needed. More than ever before, the healing meta is about two major points. How strong are your CDs, and can you add the boss while still being a healer? Based on that, Restoration Shaman have a high potential to join Paladins and decrease in the meta. Now let's talk about talents. Level 15. Unleash Life is the strongest one in almost all situations. Try to use it on CD. Level 30. Echo of the Elements is the most valuable talent. Sometimes Deluge might be good, when the raid is well packed, like in Ogozoa. Level 45 is an utility room. It really depends on the encounter and your raid composition, but most of the time you will use Spirit Wolf. Level 60, Hurt and Wall Totem and Ancestral Protection Totem are equally strong. Hurt and Wall Totem will offer you a bit more HPS through absorption on a 1 minute CD. On the other hand, Ancestral Protection Totem adds an extra resurrection to your team. Not that it will not consume a combat resurrection charge, you have to pre-shot it, and the first player who die in its area is tagged, meaning that you cannot choose who you are gonna resurrect. Level 75 Like the level 45 row, this is about utility spells. Every one of them are viable, it will depend about the encounter and your preferences. Last but not the least, Cloudburst Totem and High Tide are the two last strongest talents in almost all situations. Regarding Essences, for Major, Vision of Perfection is a sure bet. The HTT procs are insane, and this Essence got buffed for the 8 tree, meaning more procs. Sometimes you need an extra CD, then Lifebinder's Invocation might be good. On the other hand, Minors. The ever-rising tide memory of the lucid dreams and conflict and strife are the strongest essences for minus slots right now. The new essence, Ward of the Unrevering Hope, seems to be a good choice too, but it might be a little bit too early to say. For the other right traits, the most important is to have at least one Spouting Spirit and one Overflowing Shores. The more the better, but personally I like to play with two Spouting Spirits, having three might easily lead to an overhealing of your SLT. For the HPS value of all traits, you can find the link in the video description. Concerning stats, no surprise here. It will still remain Intellect, Critical Strike, Versatility, Mastery, Haste. Not that Mastery can be good in early progress, when your raid is lacking stamina. But don't focus too much on your secondary distribution. Most of the time, item levels and sockets are the most valuable things. Here's a couple of advices I can share. You should try to craft as soon as possible your alchemy stone. It's a very efficient trinket for progress. You also need to track your Cloudburst totem stored healing to pop it in the most efficient way. It is one of the factors which differentiate a good and a bad shaman. Let's move on to Battle Restoration Shaman. On this build, every combination might work. It will strongly depend about what does my raid need? Should I take my ancestral protection totem? Does my raid need a reinrush totem? Should I take Ascendance to be able to burst healing in a short window? You will have to work with your raid leader and fellow healers to determine the best build. The only talent that increases your DPS is Echo of the Elements, giving you an extra lava burst charge. Concerning Essences, the Crucible of Flame offers you the most DPS as a major essence. Conflict and Strife, the ever rising tide. Memory of Lucid Dreams and World Vein Resonance are the best miners' essences for this build. For Azerites, you must have 3 in Eosh potential, then for the 3 other traits, Swirling Sands, Natural Harmony and Thunderous Blast offers a more DPS increase. Regarding stats, you need Versatility, Haste, Critical Strike, Intellect. 
you must avoid mastery on your gear, because it's the holding stat that does not increase the DPS of the battle restoration channel. Not like other DPS, it is best to sim yourself and determine your own stat weights. I recommend you to play with DPS trinkets to reach the maximum potential damages. You should also communicate with your healers to plan with them when to use your CDs and when do they need healing assistance. If you are looking for a UI, you can find my Elf UI, Dry 2 and Shaman Wikoraz in video description if you are interested. That's all for this guide. I did not speak about corruption. It is too complex for a short video like this one. But if you are wondering about that, I put an article from Questionably Epic down below. All the information in this guide are from either my experience, the Ancestral Guidance Discord, or Niseko's in-depth shaman guide on the warhead, all linked in the description. I will upload more videos during progress, so if you enjoy my short guide, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Twitch, I will stream the mythic progress. Thanks for watching, have a nice progress. Bye.